Good morning everyone, my name is Dr. Ahmad Ghia Abdul Wahab. I'm a diagnostic radiologist working in Razgari Teaching Hospital in Erbil, Iraq. To, uh, I decided to present to you every few days a daily tip of a few minutes about some important subjects in radiology. For this time, uh, the daily tip is uh, how to differentiate between epidural and subdural hematomas. First of all, we should know that subdural hematomas are venous in origin. They are venous blood, while epidural are arterial in origin. So that indicates that in order to rupture the arteries and cause the epidural hematoma, you need an extra force. That's why epidural hematoma usually associated with the fractures while of the skull bone, while the subdural hematomas may or may not be associated with the fracture. The subdural hematomas occurs when the bridging veins between the dura and the arachnoid are ruptured. You know the arachnoid uh, matter is adherent to the brain surface, while the dura matter adherent to the skull bone. Okay, so there are some bridging veins here. When these bridging veins rupture, they will result in blood accumulating between the arachnoid matter and the dura matter. Okay, and this will result in what's called the subdural hematoma. While the epidural hematoma occurs, as in this diagram, when the arteries that lie between the dura matter and the skull bone, the arteries that move here, rupture. And usually, the dura matter is tightly fixed to the bone. So, whenever there is a fracture or something strong trauma that causes enough force to rupture these arteries, this will result in a blood accumulating between the bone and the dura, resulting in what's called epidural hematoma, as in here. And you can see the difference between the epidural hematoma and the subdural hematoma that occurs with venous blood betwe between the dura that is adherent to the bone and the arachnoid matter that is adherent to the brain surface. Okay? So, just to apply that on real cases and uh, to see how to differentiate between these two for example also this is another diagram you can see here that venous blood causes subdural hematoma while arterial blood causes epidural hematomas again another diagram showing the origin of epidural hematoma accumulating blood between the bone and the dura mater Now, this is a case, you can see here that there is blood inside the cranial cavity. This, this is a CT scan, brain CT scan, showing blood inside the cranial cavity. So, the question now is, what kind of hematoma is that? Where is the location of this blood? And you can see here that the blood is on the surface of the brain, okay? and it's tracking on the medial aspect and it is in contact with the fox cerebri so whenever the blood is crossing a suture when it's crossing a for example coronal suture or sagittal suture this indicates a subdural hematoma first second whenever the blood has a con concave shape not a convex it has a concave shape it follows the shape of the skull bone or the brain surface this means that this is subdural hematoma epidural hematomas usually have a lens shape okay so of course here the blood is crossing a coronal suture first second whenever the blood is in the subdural space it will not cross the fox because the fox would be a natural barrier to it crossing to the other side so this indicates that this is a subdural hematoma. You can see here, and you can see here. Sometimes it's not that easy to differentiate between subdural and epidural hematomas. This is another case. Now, what do you think here? There is a blood here. This dense, th dense thing in the left side of the brain, okay, and the left cerebral convexity is blood. And of course, there's usually history of trauma sometimes it might be a mild trauma especially in elderly that causes the rupture of the veins so this blood crosses the suture 
here is the coronal suture should be here and it's crossed so this the first clue that this is a subdural hematoma the second clue is that it is not a convex it's a concave it follows the shape of the skull bone this shape is typical of subdural hematoma and of course you can see it's causing mass effect marked mass effect on the adjacent cerebral hemisphere causing compression of this lateral ventricle here and here and it's causing midline shift to the other side and by the way midline shift of more than five to six millimeter is a poor prognostic sign you should keep that in mind in the, these coronal reconstructed images you can easily appreciate that this is a subdural hematoma following the convexity of the brain and the convexity of the skull bone and you can appreciate that it is crossing the suture and the shape of it completely indicative of subdural hematoma another case you can see here it's crossing the suture okay and it follows the shape of the cerebral hemisphere and the shape of the bone so indicates it's a subdural hematoma the density can give us a clue to the timing of the hematoma whenever the blood is dense this indicates an acute or subacute hematoma with time it will start to become hypodense like in the like the csf here sometimes you you might have acute on chronic bleeding it's a, a chronic hematoma that has a csf density a fluid density and another bleeding happens in it and you can see a fluid blood level we will see an example of that you can see here what's going on there are two collections here and here bilateral they follow the shape of the skull bone and the shape of the cerebral hemisphere bilaterally and each collection has two densities within it fluid density and blood density so what does that mean that means there are uh, there are bilateral subdural hematomas large ones causing compression of the cerebral hemisphere these are compressed this is not a brain normal okay and each cerebral hem uh, subdural hematoma it's chronic in nature because it has a fluid density within it this is looks just almost the same as the csf and there is another bleeding in it causing an acute episode with resultant fluid blood level so there is a bilateral acute on chronic subdural hematomas in the coronally constructed images you can see that the right side the cut is taken just right here in the in this area take showing the dense part of the right side because it's more and the fluid part of the left side here the right side is dense and the left side is fluid because it has less bleeding what about this case first there is a density here definitely this density is convex okay it's convex in shape it does not follow the shape of the skull bone or the cerebral hemisphere it does not cross the coronal suture and it's causing mass effect on the brain you can see the midline is shifted like that and the lateral ventricle is compressed this indicates an epidural hematoma the blood is collected between the bone and the dura again you can see this one here convex shape not following the brain and it's stopping at the edge of the fox cerebri indicating a subdural hematoma uh, an epidural hematoma sorry another example you can see a lens shaped has convex uh, borders does not follow the shape of the skull bone or the shape of cerebral hemisphere does not cross a suture causing mass effect on the adjacent lateral ventricle indicating an epidural hematoma another example of an epidural hematoma with two densities in it fluid and blood indicating chronic that has fluid density with an acute episode of bleeding that has a higher density resulting in acute on chronic epidural hematoma another example you can see easily appreciated here there is a hematoma with two convex borders causing mass effect on the adjacent brain not crossing the suture indicating epidural hematoma which again has an arterial blood origin now what's this what do you think is that 
let's see it's a fluid collection between the skull bone and the brain it has a convex shape sorry a concave shape it follows the surface of the brain and the shape of the skull bone indicating it's an subdural hematoma it crosses the suture the coronal suture is crossed here and it has two densities as fluid and the blood density so there is a new bleeding in an old hematoma indicating acute or on chronic subdural hematoma another example you can see here there is this density this dense collection has a convex border it is not parallel to the skull bone not parallel to the cerebral hemisphere it's causing mass effect on the adjacent lateral ventricle and it stopped here at the faults and at the uh, sagittal suture it does not cross any suture on the bone window you can easily appreciate overlying fracture so indicating this is an epidural hematoma as we said epidural hematoma since it's arterial it needs more force to develop usually associated with the fractures and that will be it thank you for listening and if you have any questions we are ready to answer thank you see you next time